Oh, Sean's calling. Sean's calling. Hello. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bro, let me get you a loudspeaker. How are you? You okay? I'm good, alhamdulillah. Okay, so chat to me, bro. Send, send me the miswak. We're gonna go, we're gonna go in five seconds, okay? And I'm even gonna give you the ring down. So I'm gonna give you the ring down, then I'm gonna say hello. All right. Okay. All right. So ring, ring, ring. Hello, Abu Musa speaking. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam amma ba. So today is the first time we're going to hold a webinar like this, a sales event like this, a sales introduction. Now, I'm a big, big advocate on sales. Why do I say this? It's because a lot of times when we're like growing up and we want to get into business and we want to start a company for ourselves, we don't really think about sales. A lot of the times people tell us, you have to have a great product. As long as you have a great product, you'll do amazing. And the truth is, I actually think, I th I think otherwise. If you can sell and if you can uh, convince someone, if you can be on someone's level and build rapport with them, you're much more likely to actually generate business. I would advise you guys to actually, if you have some notes or whatnot, try go through it because we're going to go through negotiating today. We're going to go through closing. We're going to go through uh, building rapport with the clients. Uh, we're going to go through the gatekeepers. We're going to go through quite a bit. So try, try keep on board. And inshallah, we're only going to make this 40 minutes. After the 40 minutes, um, inshallah, you can guys can ask questions in the meantime. Now, my background, I own my own recruitment company. I've been in recruitment for the last six, seven, eight years now. That's basically where I've learned all my sales. You know, I've been on client meetings. I've been, I've done cold calling. Cold calling has been a daily part of my life for eight years. And so alhamdulillah, that's something that I've genuinely learned over the years. And so now I want to share it with you guys. So first thing is first, when it comes to selling, it's all about building rapport and getting on the same level as the person who in essence you're speaking to. I'm going to try to keep this very generic because some people will want to know how to do sales on the phone. Some people will want to know how to do sales face to face. And this differs. It's a vast topic, but I'll try to go through it generically and inshallah it helps you so when you're trying to get through to someone you want to be on their same level i'll give you an example if you're speaking to someone who is 60 years old right you pick up the phone all right you pick up the phone and on the phone you see it seems like the person 60 years old you do not want to say to them oh hey mate yeah it's abu musa i'm calling from so and so any chance you can help me you don't want to do that because the likelihood is the way, they, the way they're coming across, you want to be on their same tone. So, for example, if you're calling a construction company and one of the project managers there picks up the phone, chances are he's going to be a bit more of a lad. You probably want to speak to him as like, hey, mate, it's Abu Musa. Any chance you can help me with so-and-so because I need this and this. However, if it's a 50-year-old lady, for example, uh, comes to my mind, you know, she may say, hello, you know, whatever. And you're, the likelihood is you with them, you have to say, Hey, it's Abu Musa. Um, I'm wondering if you can really help me with something. I need this and this. Now, that might be very, very subtle. But the people on who have spoken about sales for years, they always say that when it comes to the phone, your voice is amplified by 15, 20, and even more. So how you speak on the phone, it's like your emotions really come out. So when you speak to someone on the phone, it's important to be how they are or how they would want you to be or how you would maybe get along with them so very important and this could also be applied to for example when you're meeting someone face to face i go on a client meeting i see someone they seem like a lad they seem all right i may crack some jokes about for example i don't know football right i mean so what's what team do you support oh i support united oh, devil worshippers oh, okay i wouldn't say that but the point being is i would crack a joke about football if I see someone who is a lady, maybe I'm as a recruitment consultant or as someone who owns a recruitment company, we see ladies who are 40, 50 HR managers. Now with them, I wouldn't crack a football joke. With them, it would be something along the lines of, oh, so, you know, how's work been? It must be crazy at the moment. Like, I'm sure things are going very, I'm sure things are very hard at the moment. See, and that moves me on to the other thing. When it comes to building rapport with people, building rapport is essence, in, in essence, the absolute you know, pinpoint of selling. So when it comes to the person you are trying to sell to, it's important to understand where they're coming from, what they might be going through. It's important to look out for the golden nuggets. And what do I mean by this? 
Golden nuggets are sort of things like the client mentioned something. Let's say now I'm going to give you an example and you can apply this to anything that you guys have. Say it's an engineering company and they're like, oh man, yeah, work is so busy at the moment. We've got another project coming in next week. And now I won't address that straight away, but I'll keep that as ammo. And maybe at the time of negotiating a deal, I may say, look, I know things are so very busy at the moment. Um, and I know you've got another project coming in uh, next week. So what I'm going to do is make sure that our team is supporting you throughout the weekend. And therefore, we're able to you know, deliver exactly what you need. So what have I done then? I'm going to keep it very layman terms. And inshallah, maybe in the future, I can go into details about this stuff. I'm so sorry that I have to go into this very, very quickly. But when it comes to these things, you're trying to affect the person's nerve as such, right? His nerve, his problem, his issues are the fact that he has this, he has this uh, project that he needs finishing. If he doesn't finish this project, it's going to affect him. So maybe then you want to say something like, um, remember that project you mentioned, like, or you may not want to say, remember that project, but you may want to say, the project you mentioned, I mean, if, by the way, like if that doesn't get delivered on time, what happens? Like, what's the outcome of that? So you might say, well, you know, we get fined, we get charged, the, our end client isn't happy. What you're doing there is all of us, we have things in the back of our minds where we're always thinking about them. And, you know, I might be thinking, I need something done, I need something done. But someone picks the phone up to me or someone speaks to me and says, um, you know, I can help you with this situation. How is that going to affect you? What's that going to do? Um, how's that going to affect your business? What that individual, what I am telling you guys to do is in essence, bring the thought that's at the back of their heads at the front. So if it's an issue that they're going through, you're bringing it to the front. You're telling them, okay, how's that going to affect you? What's the problem? Well, is your director going to be happy? So all of a sudden the guys, they're thinking, oh, like, it's, you know, I, I might be in deep trouble here. So, and then you're saying, well, you know what? Don't worry. I've got this, like, what I'll do for you is this, 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 this. And that also puts you in a great situation to not only close a deal, but also to be able to negotiate whatever you want. Because in essence, if the client is always wanting to better themselves uh, in whatever situation, whatever scenario they're in, they always want the best outcome. They want the cheapest deal. They want it as quick as possible. That's just life. That's just how they want it, as quick. And so what you're doing there is you're actually saying to them, this is the issue. These are the issues. This is, this is the problem. This is how it's going to affect you. Your business is going to get affected. Your director is going to be on your back. The end client's not going to be happy. So I'm going to now be working on the weekends. I'll find CVs for you, for example, in a recruitment industry or maybe whatever the sales situation for yourselves. I'll make it easy for you guys by doing this, 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 this. Give them the solution after talking to them about the problem that they're going through. Give them the solution. And at that point, you have more ammo to negotiate what you want because you're giving them exactly what they need. Now, a lot of the a lot of the times you guys might be younger. I don't know how old you guys are, but a lot of the times the issue so many so many people speak about if you guys aren't in business at the moment is, well, why would they choose me? Right? Why would they choose me? Yo, keep an eye on that. Why would they choose me? Um, and so. This is very important because when you're 21, 22, 23, or you know, you've never been in business or you want to get into something that you've not been in, how do you get in front of a client and how do you convince them that you're the man without experience? And the truth is, it's all about reminding the client again about maybe where they started, you know, and maybe asking them the question that look, you know, I'm trying to start in the industry. I have to be honest, I haven't, you know, I don't have many clients at the moment. But in my opinion, that's a huge benefit because it just means that I will be able to give you time and I'll solely be reliant on you. So whatever you need, I'll be there for you because look, we're just starting off. We need an opportunity. And I know, I'm sure you were in a time where you needed an opportunity. And so do you think that whatever it is that you want to do for them, always play, it sounds terrible, but always play with their emotions. Uh, whatever person they are, you're trying to play with their emotions by saying, if they're a, a person, you know, you're talking about, again, you're talking about the football, you're talking about things they might like, they might have a really nice car outside, for example, 
you talk about it and you're like, oh, that's, a, that's a really nice car. You must be doing really well for yourself. Those sort of jokes are really like icebreakers and it gets them talking about themselves. The more the person speaks about himself, to be honest, the easier it's going to be for you because you're building rapport. And so we move on. And again, we're having to move on very quickly because I'm trying to cover many things. But we move on to after rapport, how do you build rapport? How long can it take to build rapport? So the biggest issue many times people face in sales and in a sales environment, bearing in mind that sales can sometimes, a sales job, even, a, even if we just stick to a job, can many times pay much more than a lot of the top jobs in the UK, maybe even a sales environment because it's commission-based. If you're good at it, you get a basic, of course, corporate and corporate jobs as well. You can actually earn a lot more than many senior high jobs. A doctor, seriously speaking, a doctor, you can earn more than a doctor if you are good at sales, but we'll move on. So when it comes to building rapport, the one thing that's so very important, one, firstly, is to deal with your fears because it is scary. It, it can be scary because it's like, oh man, like I, I want to do this. I really want to start this business. The same way people don't want to start businesses because it's a risk. The same way in sales, it is scary. Like picking up the phone now and saying, oh, hey, you know, so-and-so, I need this and this, or can you help me with this and this? You put the phone down and you're like, wow, you know, that was hard. You know, Because it, it's like, you don't want them to start swearing at you or be upset at you or be like, oh, why are you calling me? So it's a massive ordeal for you to overcome that first phone call. But the number one advice I'd give to you guys is, look, the same thing that I say to everyone that I, I help with and teach sales to is when you're, learning, when you're learning to swim, for example, you don't read a book and read how to do swimming. You get in the pool, you start swimming and you learn from your mistakes. And so the same way, when it comes to sales, it's impossible for me to deal through, go through every objection with you guys in one hour. Impossible. Um, maybe something for the future, but nothing, uh, you know, I just can't go through every objection. But the point here being is when you're making calls on a daily basis, when you're seeing clients on a daily basis, then in essence, what's going on is you're actually saying, I had this objection. How could I deal with it? Had this, I had this, I had. So with time, the more you do, the better you get at it. Same way when it comes to swimming, you get into a pool, you start swimming, you probably drown a couple of times, but you will learn to start swimming. And so the one thing I would say to you guys is deal with your fears. Uh, don't be scared of sales because look, man, like if you guys can at the end of a deal, close a deal of four or 5,000 pound, was it worth it to pick up the phone a hundred times in a day? Imagine a, a deal that you can make four or 5,000 pound but all you have to do is deal with your fear of picking up the phone, speaking to someone, dealing with rejection over and over to then find someone who is interested. And this then goes on to my other point that when it comes to sales, it's important. It's so very important. <laughs> you know, I, there's so many points. I don't even know how many points to go through with, with, with you at what point. But let's go through it's very important to know where the money's at. So if you're calling a company and they're a tin pot company with five people, likelihood is they're not going to make you that much money. They're just not. So it's very important to stay on top of it and keep calling and keep staying on top of them and keep saying, guys, like I really am interested. Imagine now if you do that though, after a year, you close one deal. So you've, really i kept calling and kept calling that tin pot company after a year you get a deal and then the guy says well yeah i'm done for a, a year like i don't actually need someone there's only five of us you know whatever it is by the way you guys might be taking a product to someone who they want to buy in a batch basically and maybe there's only two three maybe you're selling chairs for example for an office and you know the office only has three people you're only going to sell three chairs so it's very important to have large clients medium-sized clients and small clients because they say in sales, you see it like a tree. You want to get the fruits at the bottom of the tree, of course, because it's easy. And that helps you going, you know, it helps you start your business, your sales starts, everything starts moving. However, the good stuff at the top of the tree, it takes time. And that goes on to the other point. 
Staying in touch with your clients is the most important thing in sales. Staying in top and calling again and again and again is the most important thing in sales. And I'm going to tell you why. So see it like this. Someone calls you. Uh, let's look at someone here. Muneebs. Muneebs, I'm picking on you, mate. Someone calls you and says, hey, Muneeb, are you interested in this, 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 this? You'll be like, no, nah, who are you? What's your name? I don't even know you. What are you on about, right? First time you've ever spoken to them. The second time, Muneebs, iPhone, someone calls you and says, well, look, it's me again. Remember, we spoke. Would you be interested in this, 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 this? You'd say, it rings a bell. I can't really remember. I don't know who you're on about. Are you calling from India? I don't know right? But the fifth or sixth or seventh time, Muneebs, you would say, oh, Abu Musa, yeah, man, yeah. I don't need anything at the moment. I'm not interested right now. Having said that, maybe in a month. And I'll tell you this, you stay in touch with the people you're trying to sell to. If you keep in touch with them and keep calling them within a limit, don't call them every day. They'll get irritated. Maybe every month, keep in touch. Um, there will come a time where they actually need something and they'll call you. They'll call you and they'll say, I'm looking for this, this, this. Can you help me with it? And that is the best deal. Why? Because it's super easy. The client has a need and is coming to you. But the only way that will happen is if they know you. See, we buy from people we trust. We buy from people we know. And if you don't trust someone, if you don't know them, and if they don't come across reputable, you're not going to take it from them. You're not going to be interested in someone. How many times do we get a call from India and we just laugh with it and we're just cracking jokes and we start talking in like Urdu or whatever. We're like, what do you want? You know, why do we do that? It's because we don't trust them. We thank them for a joke. Should we? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying it's okay to do that. It's not. But if you come across reputable, if you keep in touch, if they remember your name, your company, they'll come to you when they need something. Um, and so I would say the I was going to say something, but it's, it's a shirky thing to say, so I'm not going to say it. It's actually something the non-believers say. But the, the golden ball, the absolute first thing, the best thing, the one thing you have to do in sales is stay in touch with your companies. That doesn't apply to just calling, by the way. No, it also applies to when you're going on a client meeting, you're on a meeting and, you know, the guy says to you, no, we're not interested right now. And you say, fantastic, not a problem at all. Listen, all I want to ask you, though, is do you think it would be okay for me to pop in next month and just have a chat, catch up with you and find out how things are? Now, if he says yes, you turning up next month is not going to be an issue at all because he already agreed to it. See what I'm saying? Like he already agreed it was not going to be an issue. And so when you then call uh, or when you rather turn up the month after for another meeting with this individual, it's not going to be an issue because he already agreed to it. And again, it applies to the phone calls. When you're speaking to these clients, always say to them, do you think, when do you think I can call back? When do you think I can give you a call again? When do you think things might pick up? When they're answering these questions, you're writing that down, you're putting it away, and you're basically saying, great, all right for me to give you a call then. And here you're not saying, you're not saying, do you think it would be okay for me to call them? Because that's a yes or no. Rather, here we're saying, are you all right for me to call them? So here you're already implying it's okay. And these things are so very important in sales. I cannot reiterate as much. There are so many things, so many ways of saying things when you're asking a question, if you want them to say yes to them, ask to them to do, ask in a way where they're going to say yes. For example, in recruitment, we go through, we go meetings, we go to meetings, we go see our clients, right? So I'll say, hey, John, hey, Mark, I'm in the area. You think uh, I'm going to be in the area anyway. You're right if I just pop in for a little bit and have a catch up with you. So here now, look what I've done. I've said I'm in the area, which I'll probably be, you know, seeing another client. You're right for me to just pop in. It's very difficult for him to like say, no, I don't want you to come. It's hard because all I'm saying is, hey, Mark, hey, John, I'm in the area. Is it all right for me to pop in for a little bit and have a catch up when you find out how things are? It's easy. I've basically said, we're going to have a chat. It's nothing serious. Um, you know, and when I go there, it's then my job to figure out how things are, you know, how's business, what's going on. Um, you know, where do you see yourself in two months with everything that's moving and stuff like that. 
And that moves on to my next point. Um, when we're doing sales, always ask questions which are open. Don't ask things like, um, how are things, uh, how, you know, don't ask things like, do you need this? Yes or no. Um, do you want this? Yes or no. Uh, don't ask things like, which are just basically don't ask questions which are yes or no. So there are things that you can ask uh, questions like, uh, how do you go about whatever it is? Where do you go for whatever it is? Um, what are you looking to do? Open ended questions. Give it a search online, by the way. It's very easy. Uh, what, you know, open ended questions. Uh, find them online and go through them because they are so very important. And it, instead of asking a yes or no question, which, by the way, you on the phone to a client, like you're going to go through something. And if you just say yes or no, that, question, that conversation is going to last for like a minute. Sometimes what happens is, by the way, yeah, a thought just came to my mind. Who wants to do a practice live phone call with me right now? If you want to do that, can you guys put your hands up, by the way? Is there anyone that can put their hands up? I'll do it. Aye, aye, aye. Shawan Sheikh. Woo! Okay. Shawan. Shawan. Umar Dar. Okay. Who's going to do it? Mm, I'll do it. Sami Akra. Ooh, aye, 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 aye. You man on fire. Okay. I have to pick one man. I feel like it'll be too long. But let me go through. Okay, you know what? Okay, you know what? Let's do it. Let's get you on. Give me the mask. Let's get you on. A live phone call right now. Let's see how good you man really are. Hang on. Let's go with... Shawn, we said you, you first, man. You first. You were the first guy. Let me... How do I now... Let me find you, mate. Let me find you. Hey, you are. Uh, ba, 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 ba. How do I unmute me, mate? Are you muted? Are you unmuted? Shout one. Are you there? Shout one's done a runner. I think he's done a runner. Has he done a runner? doesn't let you unmute now how do i get you to unmute you know what uh participants let's go let's go show one show one show one show one it's not letting me man it's not letting me unmute you right now i'm gonna have to give this live call a miss unless yo see if you can figure it out whilst i whilst i carry on uh, yeah anyone so well let's do yeah if we can do anyone eh? let's do anyone if you if you can do anyone, then let's do anyone. Let's see if we can do a live 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 call on thing right now. I'm gonna carry on while he sees if we can get you on to do a live live call. I'm gonna see what he said. Uh, I think you have to rejoin and join with other things. Ah, oh, that's too long, man. That's too long. Maybe inshallah next time. Maybe inshallah next time. Where is that thing on? It's usually there. I think oh, I did it. I, I think when man's are doing it, where is the thing on? I think I did it auto by default. I did. Uh, that you get muted automatically. I thought some some uh, nutters are gonna join. You see, so I, do, I think you have to just click start with you at the bottom. No, 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 you don't. It's just uh, anyway. We're gonna carry on. We're gonna carry on because we don't wanna we don't wanna waste too much time, man. We don't wanna waste too much time. Yeah, he's there, but he can't. Yeah, participants can't unmute. I did that setting from the start. I thought some crazy nutters are gonna join, and so anyway, um, where were we? Where were we? That's a question for you guys. Where were we? Who can remember? Who can remember? Where were we? Open-ended questions. Ah, Sant Omar, very good, very good. The open-ended questions. So when you're asking the clients, um, their reply, with the way they reply to you basically is absolutely pivotal. Now, say you say to a client, uh, Sarah, right? Sarah, uh, how's things at the moment? I assume work's been busy. What's been going on? Now, you've asked that question. Sarah says, yeah, Abu Musa, you know, work has been so busy right now, but to be fair, I took last week off. I was just, you know, I was just not feeling it. And I needed a break. Uh, but yeah, work's been busy. We had a couple of things that came off and, uh, you know, we're looking for this, this, and this. Now, Sarah has mentioned three things, right? The, the point I'm trying to make to you guys now is 
it's not just about getting the answer to your question. That's not the point. The point is always to find out exactly. For example, okay, she went on a holiday, right? Sarah, oh, you went on a holiday. Where did you go then? Oh, yeah, I went to Greece for a couple of days. Greece, that's, I hear that's nice. Listen, I've never been, but I hear Greece is lovely. Uh, you must be dreading coming back to work. I assume you're overloaded with work at the moment. Now, this conversation has got nothing to do with what you want, but what you're doing is building rapport and she may let slip something that you need. Something where in her weak moment, in their weak moments, I promise you, where their guard is down, where they're not talking about the business deal, the work deal, they will say something. Something which will work in your favor. That's exactly what you're trying to do. You're always trying to look out for the golden nuggets when you're having a conversation. So for example, this happens a lot, by the way. I think you just have to start again, man. Uh, you uh, this happens a lot. I may call a client and I might say, I've got this really good engineer. He's looking for work in the local area. Any chance you might need someone like this? And you know what they'll say? They'll say, that's not really a skill set we're looking for at the moment, to be fair. Now, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Tell me in the comments, what should my response be? If I ask the question and I say, I've got this person, he's looking for work. Any chance you might be looking for this? And he says, that's not something we're looking for at the moment. What should what what are we what are we saying here? Aha, uh -huh. Adnan Qureshi, Asan. Very good. So, so here, without him saying it, he's implied that's not a skill set we're, we're looking for at the moment. Okay, great. No problem. So, what is a skill set? So, is there something that I can help you with? I assume. Or again, see, this is the perfect situation where he is implied that he's not looking for that. So, what you're going to do now, you can either ask him, so are you looking for this and this or uh, so are you looking for something else and he's going to say yes or no or you're going to say well i assume then you're looking for someone else what exactly is it or you say what exactly is it you're looking for i assume you're looking for someone else so here you're assuming for him to say yes for him to just tell you what exactly he's looking for or you ask a question like are you looking for something else and he's gonna say yes or no so what i'm saying here is Try pick up in these golden nuggets, pick up on these points. It's so very important uh, to always be aware, always, always be aware and be very smart with your words, very smart in how you make them say yes, how you make them say no. Uh, you know, always try to be different as such as well. So it's the last 15 minutes or so, and then we're going to go into questions. So we'll go with closing and negotiating. If there's something in particular you want me to go over, mention it in the comments, but I think closing and negotiating is massive. Uh, so we'll go over that very, very quickly. Again, I'm so sorry. I feel like I'm talking so much. Well, I tell you, my mouth is dry as anything, but I'm continuing for you guys. Inshallah, it benefits you. So when it, let's go to should we do closing first. Getting past the gatekeeper. I did mention that before in the beginning. Ibrahim, maybe you are not there. Maybe you weren't there. As if there is no objection I cannot deal with, with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> I mean, although I'm joking, to be honest with you, there isn't one I can remember right now. But inshallah, uh, if I remember, how many guys are there right now? I can't see that thing's gone. I don't know what you did. So they just pop up there and they join it. Yeah, but are, are they still joining? Yeah, yeah when they come, okay. I just click That's fine. On. Oh, here in 41. Um, so, the, uh, closing. Let's go closing first. Closing, closing, closing. Great. So when it comes to closing, this is... <laughs> Alhamdulillah, fast is going well, man. Um, so when it comes to closing, it's very important to understand exactly what the situation is of the client. So um, a lot of the times, you want to know what the issue is or what's stopping the client from making that decision. A lot of the times it's price, by the way. A lot of the times it is money. And we'll go on to that when it comes to negotiating. We'll somewhat cover it now. But you want to figure out, okay, I know there's a problem and you need my service because we've already discussed that and we've got to the stage of closing. So tell me this, what's actually stopping you? What's the problem? Because if this benefits your business, if this is going to be uh, something which you know is going to increase your revenue or be good for you, I'm... I, let, uh, let me tell me what is the issue 
really have that consultation with the client and understand where's the problem. And now, by the way, guys, like this can also apply to any service you're providing. So for example, a marketing company, maybe some of you guys want to start your own marketing company and you want to do sales. And by the way, yeah, there's so many people offering marketing things, but they never teach you how to do sales. And sales is the main part of how you're going to start a marketing company. Uh, having said that, when it comes to a client now, say he's interested in your services, right? And we're going to give the marketing example because we've given a couple of recruitment and others. So, yeah, Umar, add Umar in right now, man. Umar, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, Umar. Um, so when it comes to... Wallahi, fast, a'udhu billah, it's getting to me. Uh, so when it comes to... Bro, what was I saying, man? What was I saying? What was I saying? Marketing. Thank you. Jazakallah khair. May Allah reward you. So when it comes to the marketing side, say you're going to have a, a conversation with a client and the client says to you, look, I am interested. It's of need, but it's not something I, I, I'm looking to get into right now. You want to remind them again. Let me, let me explain to you like this, Mr. Client. You not using our service every single day means that I cannot increase the people coming to your restaurant, your place, your dentist, your whatever, Every single day, every day you're not using our service, you're missing out on customers. So I'm failing to understand here exactly what is the problem because I'm saying I'm trying to bring more customers to your services. In return, you pay me a fraction of what you're going to make. So correct me, but what is the problem? Like I really want to understand: is it the money? Is it what? What is it? What you're trying to do basically is remind them exactly what benefits you're bringing to them. Remind them exactly what is it that is going to sort of increase their revenue. Look, if you're going to take 50 pound and you're going to make them 100 pound, no business person in the world will say no. No one's going to say no. So I would always say, go back to what exactly it is you're providing them, how it will benefit them and what exactly it is. And then close them by saying things like, great, no problem. What I'll do, I'll bring the paperwork tomorrow. Are you or you say again, see, smart with the words. You say, I'll bring the paperwork tomorrow. Uh, what time are you going to be free? Say he says three o'clock or say he says, I'll be free in the morning. This is something that clients do a lot, by the way. They'll say the morning. Always, always say what time exactly in the morning because you want to be specific. And the reason you want to be specific again, and I'll go on to something else just before we move on to negotiating that when you get a time from them and they don't deliver on that time, they're responsible for it. So if you say to a client, I'm going to turn up or I'm going to give you a call or I'm going to have a meeting with you at nine o'clock tomorrow or I'm going to drop the contracts and we're going to sign it off, then you're getting a promise for them. So the same way, maybe you're on the phone to the marketing company or recruitment or sales or whatever, whatever you're trying to sell and you say to them, is this something of interest or whatever sort of thing? And he says, I'll come back to you next week. At that point, you want to say, and you want a promise from them. Great, no problem. I'm actually out of the office some part of next week. Do you think you can come back to me by Wednesday? And he says, yeah, I'll try to come back to you by Wednesday. What you've done there then is by giving the day that he should come back to you by, you call him next week, Wednesday, follow up. Follow up is where it's at. I keep saying, follow up is where every single sales deal is at. So you follow up. Okay, great. So Wednesday, you call, we discussed last week, you said, give me a call Wednesday, you know, have you had an update? Can you let me know? Oh, listen, mate. Yeah. I've not had a chance. Can you give me a call back in 48 hours? Or can you give me a chance? Can you give me a call back next week? For example, you'd be like, yeah, that's fine. Do you think Monday will be all right? So here you're pushing a promise date. When you push a promise date, you're able to move along uh, the sales, the, the the routine of exactly what you're doing, you're able to move it along. And that's so very important uh, to get a promise because then they can't get irritated. A lot of the times people are scared and they're like, oh man, what if someone just gets irritated? What if someone gets annoyed? How am I going to take it? So trust me, this is basically like, you just want to get a promise and that was much easier. So we'll move on now to negotiating. Negotiating. <clears throat> Like my math is so dry. Uh, subhanallah. Negotiating. When it comes to negotiating, there are two ways that you can negotiate. You're either the buyer or the seller. You're, sorry, rather, you're rather you're either buying the product or you're selling the product. Okay. So here now, 
there are many things that you can do and you may have heard the term don't mention the money first and we'll go through that so a lot of times people say say you're now going to buy a car i see this is how powerful sales is by the way where people think it's just for business or certain jobs or anything like that when you're going to buy a car you're negotiating with the person you're buying the car and if you can negotiate 100 200 pound off or 300 pound off every single time you buy a car you'll be saving money every single situation man i promise you you guys are practically selling so much so negotiating now i am only covering a tenth well like even less than a tenth but now negotiating you guys will also have to negotiate when you have to go for a salary like you're going for a job and you need to negotiate your salary how do you negotiate that does anyone teach you that no one teaches you that and so sales is not just you know sometimes people think oh sales is the guy on the phone just selling like a, a sales person in an office that's not true you are always selling our mothers always sell when they go clothes shopping you know i'm not gonna take it i'm just gonna walk out you know that's a sales technique that our mothers do right when they go for clothes shopping and they say i'm gonna walk out. i don't want this trust me they, that is actually a technique but if our mothers knew other techniques maybe they'd get more money off so we'll go on to negotiating one of the ways people say to negotiate uh, is not to ever mention exactly how much money you want to drop down. Now, I'll give you the idea of a car. Say it's £10,000, a car. And you go, you see it, you love it, everything like that. And you say to him, oh, Charlie, love the car, really nice. And that's the other thing, by the way. Don't just badmouth cars. Like, Don't just badmouth the product that the person is selling. In fact, Make them feel like, look, you really like this. You do really want it. You're a serious buyer, but you haven't got the budget for it, right? So let me give you the idea now. You're there, 10,000 pound, and the guy said, and you say to the guy, look, the best I can do is 9,000 pound. And the guy's like, all right, listen, I can't do 9,000 pound. I can do 9,500 pound. You're like, oh, Charlie, Charlie, please, man, please, please. Let's meet in the middle. 9,250 pounds. Now, a lot of the times when people are negotiating, that's exactly what happens. You say the number, they say the number back. And, you know, in return, nothing, you agree a price. That's how you basically negotiated your price. Now, instead, instead, imagine you say to the guy, look, we really like this car. It is a car that I really want, but my budget just, that's not my budget what's the best you can do right say you know he says to you say he says to you uh, nine thousand pound right now he has said nine thousand pound i'm going to give that example and there are many times by the way you'll be surprised maybe that he says eight thousand eight hundred pound right but let's just say he says nine thousand pound so he said the number first and now you're in a situation to say look i do really like it but that's just, it's just not within my budget. Like, what's the absolute best you can do? I do want it. I really like that car. I like you, Charlie, whatever his name is. What's the best you can do? Maybe drops it to eight, nine. At that point, you can say, look, I'm happy. I want it. I'll shake on it. If you can do it for eight, six, 50, you know, that 150, I'm really pushing it. I'm really, really pushing it. But I'll do the eight, six, 50, right? What I'm saying here is you don't know how much the other person is going to drop. So if you drop your price way more than uh, the other person was going to drop, then you're missing out in essence. Um, <laughs> so that way, what you're basically saying is, you, but in essence, you don't know how much they're going to drop the car, right? And so when you go and you speak to them, because by default, you're always expected to negotiate cars. The other thing you can do is say, look, I'm absolutely this. I'm drained. I haven't got no more money. What I will do is go to my parents and ask my parents, listen, if they can help me out 100, 200 pounds, that's the best I can do, man. This is actually a technique that many people use. And it's a technique you can use in a corporate environment as well. And you use it in a way where you say, a client says to you, can you do it for this? And you say, no, that's not how much I can do it for. Um, like, I've never done it for that. But I have to go to my director. Let me check with him. It's called like a, you're going to someone superior to make it out as if you, dra you drained everything. You've, yeah, look, people are there, yeah. Morning. 
It is popping up. So you've made it out like you've drained uh, all avenues and now you're having to go to your parents to ask for money. So the person will feel like, okay, this guy is genuinely doing as much as he can when it comes to negotiating. Negotiating is so big and I've only got a minute before I can I'll get you to always ask questions. But let me go through this very quickly. It's also very good in certain situations when you're selling a product to give the price in the beginning. And the brother actually mentioned it and he made it, he made a fair point. Because if you say now, um, say the client says, <laughs> say the client says, uh, what's the best you can do? Or, or he doesn't have that conversation. You tell them, you say, I will do this for you. I will do that for you. I will do this for you. You give them the consultation. This is how it's going to help you. But the minimum I can, you know, I don't do deal. I can't do this for less than 7,500 pounds. For example, whatever it is. And the client says, well, that's crazy. That's so much. Like I, I could not, I, I was thinking much less than that. At that point, you say, look, a really and truly, this is, this is what I stick to. This is the price I offer. The best case scenario, I can do, you know, 7,300 pounds, right? And I'm going to teach you something now. If you have said 7,500, imagine the client turning around and saying, can you do it for 2,000 pounds? Like, it's not even possible because the client would feel embarrassed to say 2,000 pounds. Does that make sense? So when you're now selling a service, you're offering the money first and you're saying it's going to cost you this much. This is everything I'm going to offer you. And in return, you know, sorry, but it's going to be this much. That's my, that's my cost. That's my fee. The client's going to be very embarrassed if it's like 50%. Imagine giving 50% off for a deal. It wouldn't happen. Um, and if the client pushes, never just drop from, you know how you see, by the way, this is interesting, right? You guys might've seen this where you see, People selling courses, right? I've seen this. I'm not, I'm not adding anyone, by the way, before you guys start sending some messages saying, is it this? And they'll be like 80% off or 50% off my course today or flipping 99% off the course today, today alone. To be honest with you, if your course was any good or if your service was any good, or if your product was any good, you would never ever take 80% off. What that does is it reduces the value of what you're offering. If I am offering you guys something for a thousand pound and I now say, you know what? It's 80% off, 200 pound. Automatically it's making it out like, you know what? Like surely it, this, whatever he was offering was never a thousand pound then. Because how could you offer, imagine like a MacBook, right? Someone comes to you and says a MacBook, 200 pound. You'll be like, nah, there's something wrong with it. Don't make sense. I'm not buying it. You won't even buy the MacBook for 200 pounds because you'll be like, it doesn't make sense. I like, it's probably a fake. It's probably going to get locked or blocked or something's going to happen when I go home. So automatically what I'm saying is always stick to the value of what you're offering and reduce very small amounts. So at 7,500 pounds, I said, look, the best I could do is, you know, 7,300 pounds, uh, really pushing it. We don't go below 75. But you know, I will reduce, I will take off the admin fee. I will do this and I'll do it for 7,300 pounds. She comes back to you and says, it's still very high. I can't do that. And you're like, yeah, but look, you know, it's just not possible. You do this, you do the, uh, the, the way where you say, let me go back to my finances and speak money and I'll come back to you with, I'll email you with what I could do. Right. And then you, you come back uh, three hours later, you say, look, 7,100 pounds. Um, you know, and the 100 pound is, you know, it genuinely is, it's covering things. And I can't do more than that. Basically, I can't do less than that. She'll come back to you and you know, maybe she'll say seven or six, eight or six, seven, but she won't reduce it to six or five, five, because that's too much. It's like, that doesn't even make sense. Um, and so in, in negotiating, by the way, negotiating is massive. I could honestly talk to you guys about negotiating for 12 hours. I'm speaking so fast right now because I'm trying to cover as much as I can for you guys. Uh, but when it comes to negotiating, always reduce it down slightly. When you're buying something, let the person who is selling say the number first, reduce down from there. I hope that was of benefit. I hope, inshallah, you guys benefited from today's session as such. Now, <laughs> someone said 4997 now, 2997. Is something wrong with that if it's 297 now? If you guys now have any questions for the next 12 minutes, 
Fadlan, please ask me any questions if you guys have any questions. And inshallah, I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. Again, if you guys, by the way, benefited today, let me know, like send me a DM. Let me know if you guys benefited, by the way. Uh, take a screenshot, by the way, of our course today. Take a screenshot of this. Uh, do tag me if you benefited. If you benefited, tag me on a gram as well and let me know. Uh, that would be of benefit. Would there be a recording? Uh, I have recorded it, bro. I don't, uh, I wasn't planning on putting it up, to be honest, but I have recorded it. Maybe I'll put it up on YouTube. Maybe I'll put it up on YouTube. But if you guys have a question, do you guys have any questions regarding sales, sales jobs, sales in business, maybe taking a product to market? Like I haven't even talked about taking a product to market. How would you go about selling a website to a company? So uh, is this a website that you have created for a company? Okay, good. So when it comes to a website, what you want to do is one, go on their website. I would go on their website and I would say, I would give them a call, right? This is exactly what I would do. Hello, Abu Musa speaking. Um, I'm wondering if you can help me so much. I was going on your website and I had a look. Um, there were a couple of issues. It, it seemed like it was a little bit slow and I was hoping I could speak to someone who deals with your website, um, someone in marketing, or I assume someone who looks after it. Do you know who that might be? Here now, what have I done? By the way, she still might say no. I'm not saying she's going to say yes or he or whatever. I've implied at the end of it, I've said, do you know who I need to speak to? Or do you think I can speak to them? Hopefully she's, she puts me through. I would do that a hundred times, man. There's millions of websites out there, by the way. And so there's plenty of clients where you can get business from. I would try to get the business from them. Uh, I would speak to that individual and I would say, look, you know, I've had a look on your website. There's an issue here, 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 here. Find the issues, find what's problem, find, what, find what's problematic and tell them what you can improve for them and how that would generate more business. If they have a better website, of course, they become a, a lot more reputable. If they're reputable, they'll get a lot more business through there. And maybe they have a website where you can buy products through their website. And so sell them that service. Bring them benefit. If you bring them benefit, people will say yes. Uh, and honestly, man, pick up the phone as much as you can, like for real. Um, so under 16, I don't know about under 16, man, to be honest. What sector of sales do you think is best to start a recruitment estate agency? So I would say any sort of corporate sales. Recruitment is good. Recruitment is very good. Uh, software selling, software sales, IT sales. IT sales is massive, by the way. Um, even estate agency is good. But estate agencies, you don't do like on the phone selling as much. Uh, it's more face-to-face -face selling. Um, so I would say, honestly, there's so many, by the way. There's so many cold call. If you just search business development manager, there's so many jobs. Like you're looking at like 40, 45K basics on just business development manager. I've got a client at the moment looking for a business development manager in an engineering company and they're paying them 60, 65 basic without commission, uh, plus a car allowance. So you're looking at 75. For someone who does sales, like you could never have gone to uni, you could never have gone to uni, learn sales, like, and have a 75K job after like five, six years. I hire those people all the time. So sales is big, man. How do you get into sales with no prior specific sales experience or getting into an entry level sales role? So learn as much as you can about sales. If you go and for an interview, for example, and you discuss with them, look, you know, I'm really interested. I know sales is all about being resilient, accepting rejection, you know, continuing to follow up. I know it's all about following up. Uh, and I want to learn as much as possible. To be honest, man, if you say the right things in an interview, Sales is all about the person, the personality, and, you know, like, are they resilient? Are they motivated? Are they money motivated? So if you show all those things, the client will definitely, you know, you, you will get hired, no doubt. <clears throat> is there info you don't have or not sure about how do you mask your uncertainty? You know what? That's a very good question. Masking uncertainty, you mask it by being certain. You And, and what do I mean by this? Like, a lot of the times I, uh, th I do this, basically, uh, if there's a candidate whose name is like proper complicated, I would just say in the most confident way uh, where the guy would probably even think this guy's saying my name right. I don't even know how to say my name right. You know, sometimes you just really, really try to stay as confident as you can. However, if it's a technical question which affects the deal, um, I would always say that something, you know, oh, I, I could say something like, look, I'm not, I'm not at my desk at the moment. Let me get back to my desk. I'll come back to you. Something like that. Or let me just check and I'll come back to you. Um, so I think uncertainty should be masked with confidence 
Um, having said that, if it affects the deal, go back and yeah, just come back. Can you try to take one off the participant for role play now? I think everyone would appreciate it. Well, hey, I think you are 100% right. How about this? How about this? You know what? I'm going to do you this. One of you guys can call the office. How about that? I'm going to give you guys my office line right now. And one of you guys can call the office, right? Right now. Okay. Inshallah, this is going to benefit you guys. Inshallah, you guys appreciate this and it benefits you. Uh, let's do this. So, let me get my number out for you guys. Right. My number, the first one to call, you have to sell me. You have to, man said you, I thought. <laughs> okay, you have to sell me. What are we going to sell? What are we going to sell? What do you guys want to sell me first? Because we have to we have to get the script ready first. A pen. I love that. A pen. Good. Okay. A miswak. No, you know what? That's true. That's much better. A miswak. You have to sell me a miswak. Okay. My number is... This is my number. Who's calling it? Oh, wait, that's a direct message. Oh, that's a direct call to Shawan Sheikh. Shawan, if you're still there, that's going straight to you. Unfortunately, it was already on Shawan. So if Shawan's going to call me, Shawan, it's on you, mate. Don't back out now. I'm waiting for that call. Let me actually send it to everyone. Just in case Shawan doesn't call. Oh, Shawan's calling. Shawan's calling. Hello. Wa alaykum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bro, let me get you a loudspeaker. How are you? You okay? I'm good, alhamdulillah. Okay, so chat to me, bro. Send, send me the miswak. We're going to go We're gonna go in five seconds, okay? And I'm even going to give you the ring down. So I'm going to give you the ring down, then I'm going to say hello, all right? Okay. All right, so ring, ring, ring. Hello, Abu Musa speaking. Wa alaykum salam, this is Sean here. Can I just take five minutes of your time? Yeah, sure. It's just, I'm calling you guys to selling miswak. I'm sure you know what miswak is. Right. Yeah, I know what miswak is. Yeah, for the Now the season is Ramadan. We want to increase our like, do good acts. So I want to see if you're interested in buying miswak. Uh, I'm not. I'm not really sure, man. I'm not really sure to be honest. I, I've, it's not something I've thought about. Mm, okay. Now do you know miswak? Obviously, the benefits of it for sunnah, and you get every time you do it, you get rewards. I'm sure you're aware of that. Yeah, yeah, I know you get, you get, you, you do, you do pick up some good rewards, don't you, when you use a miswak? So yeah, yeah, I know, I know about that. I know about that. Yeah, and not only that, it's not only just the rewards, it's by science, you can research about the health benefits you get from it. Like it's much better than normal toothpaste. And plus, it's very simple. It's not really that much, just to buy a couple of pounds. But I'm wondering if you were interested in it. Um, yeah, like, look, just send me, send me, yeah, send me one. Yeah, send me one. Like, if I, if I give you my address now, Send me, send me one over, man. That's not a problem. How much is one? Two pound? Yes, two pound. Oh, I'll buy it for two pound fifty. Two pound fifty? Yeah. I'll pay not two bucks. Yeah? I'll, okay. I'll send you my address then, all right? All right. So, all right, stay on the phone, Sean. Stay on the phone. Now, a lot of the people in their messages said, said you should ask questions, right? And by the way, Sean, you did sick, man. I, I like, listen. Firstly, big up to you, the fact that Shawn even called and wanted to do this. It's not easy and not many people want to do it. And so Shawn, the first, sorry, bro, how do you say your name? Is that right? Am I saying it right? Yeah, you're saying it's perfect. Okay, Barakallah Fee. So the first thing is, when, when I took the call, you said, do you have five minutes, right? And so you shouldn't say that. And I'm going to tell you why first, right? Okay. Is because when you make a call, we're told in sales that your first six seconds or your first six to eight seconds are the most important. Basically, it's the most important time of the call, right? And I always say, this is something that I say, that if you have a gun and it has six bullets, in essence, when you make a call to a client, you also have six bullets, right? Mm -hmm. And what that means is you have six bullets, as in six questions, before a client gets aggravated. Before he's like, I can't be bothered with this guy. Right. And so by asking the question, uh, by the way, take this as benefit, bro. Like, please, like, I don't want you to think like, oh, I'm just grilling you. Right? I'm just I'm just trying to help you sort of thing. So when you say basically, do you have five minutes? One, that's taking up time. And second, that's using up ammo of a question where you could have asked somewhere else. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, for example, um, maybe I would have said something along the lines of, 
Shawan, Abu Musa speaking. Listen, just a quick one. We do miswaks. We're selling miswaks at the moment. Uh, do you know what a miswak is? Right? It's related to what I'm selling. It's related to what I'm offering. And also a few people messaged in the, in the comments and they were right in what they said. Always ask questions. Because when you ask questions, you're trying to understand exactly, maybe, you look, know, maybe I'm a millionaire, which I'm not. Maybe I'm a billionaire. And I would love to earn reward. And not only that, I would love to earn reward for everyone else, right? So if you say to me that, oh, uh, look, man, miswak sunnah, you earn reward from it. It keeps your teeth clean. You could be sitting at a desk and actually cleaning your teeth. Who wouldn't want a miswak? And not only that, if you buy it for everyone, then, you know, you'll be doing all right. Tell me how many colleagues and how many family members do you have? Right. Because, yeah. see, you sold me one, but we could have you could have sold me maybe, you know, 20, 30, 40. You, as in, it's important to ask that question. It's important to always figure out how much the client would want. See, if I was a millionaire and you sold me one, technically you missed out, even though you made a sale. Does that make, does that make sense? Yeah, no, I get what you mean. So, yeah, I would say, bro, sick. You smashed it. Listen, you called me and that's the most important thing. And I appreciate it. But yeah, hopefully just take those. And listen, what are you planning on doing something? Are you planning on making calls or do, do you want to learn? Why do you want to learn sales? I think you know, sort of sales is something that's very important, especially with like business, but everything else, like your interactions that you do with people, it's almost like a sales. Mm. And so it's like working with people, knowing how they react to things. And so mm. sales is like a very important skill that I think is important to learn. Mm. And so inshallah, I know I've made my own business, just to close people, something that I want to learn and master it. Inshallah, inshallah. May Allah make it easier for you. If there's anything I can help with, please, by all means, uh, always message me. And, and yeah, man, I'd love to help anyone and everyone. So listen, you smashed it. Yes? Barakallahu feek, Shawn. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hey, Shawn killed it. I can't lie. Listen, honestly speaking, right? It takes a confident man to give me a call and have a, a live call with me or so on and so forth. And by the way, I was very nice on the call as well, right? So uh, listen, my brothers and sisters, I hope you guys benefited. I don't know why I was looking at the cameras there, but I hope you guys benefited. Inshallah, this was of benefit. Uh, let me know, message me. Let me know it was of benefit. Um, and yeah, today this is all. I am going to try to do this again next month, okay? It's probably going to be similar stuff. I want to keep it very introductionary based uh, for next month or the month after. Maybe inshallah we'll make it longer than after. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll do something for everyone which is more in depth. By the way, I've just, a video of mine has actually been uploaded at seven o'clock, a live of me in my recruitment company in Ramadan. So if you guys want to check that out, that's on YouTube right now. That's all from me today. Uh... But Jazakallah Karen, I appreciate your um, support and watching. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.